Well, this is take two of today's vote devotion. I noticed someone had put up that they weren't able to hear, so I wanted to double check to make sure my microphone was on. One of the nice things about these daily devotions is that I can follow up on things that I talked about in my Sunday sermons. Yesterday, during church, I talked about God's will. We're going through the Lord's Prayer. We talked about, thy will be done. There's something about God's will that I didn't mention yesterday that I'd like to talk about today. I'd like to correct what I believe to be an error in understanding how God's will works. God's will is less like a tightrope, and it's more like a pasture. Let me tell you a couple of stories from the Bible to explain. In the first story, Jesus encounters a man who is possessed by a multitude of demons. The demons recognize who Jesus is, and they know what he can do to them, so they're terrified. So the demons ask Jesus, if you drive us out, send us into that herd of pigs. And Jesus did. The demons went into the pigs, the pigs run down the hill into the water and all drown to death. Now, there's a lot of curious things in this story. I just want to focus on one of them. The demons made a request, and Jesus honored it. Now, if it was Jesus' will for something else to happen to those demons, then why did he adjust his plans just because they asked him to? Here's a second story. This one comes from the Old Testament. Moses is up on Mount Sinai where he's getting the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments on them, getting the rest of the Jewish law. And meanwhile, the Israelites are down in camp where they have created a golden calf. They've made an idol and begin to worship it. The Lord, understandably, is furious. So he decides that he's going to destroy the nation. Moses intervenes. Moses asks God to reconsider his plans. And depending on which translation you're reading, the Lord repented or the Lord changed his mind. Neither of these stories make sense if God's will is a tightrope. If there is only one single specific narrow plan to follow what God wants us to do. If God's will is a tightrope, you just take one little slight misstep and you're going to end up falling off the rope and hoping there's a net down there below you before you hit the rocks. Jesus adjusted his plans because the demons asked him to. The Lord changed his mind about destroying Israel because Moses asked him to. Hold on just a moment. That'll teach me to turn the phone off before I start these. So in either situation, you could say that God went off the tightrope and God was no longer following his own will. So instead of thinking of God's will as a tightrope, think about it as a pasture. You know what a pasture is. It's a big, wide field. The cattle can wander anywhere in that field where they want to. And there's lots of options. They can go stand up on top of the hill. They can go lay down in the shade under that tree. They can all congregate at one end over here. You can go over at the other end where you want to go by yourself. There's all sorts of places the cows can go in that pasture. But they don't have unlimited options because if a cow decides I'm going to go across the road over to the other side, they're either going to get a shock from the electric fence or a jab from the barbed wire that's keeping them in the pasture. There's lots of options but there are also firm limits that go beyond the boundaries of the pasture. I believe this is what God's will is like. God's will includes a whole range of possibilities, and anything within those ranges is perfectly fine. But of course, there are limits. There are firm boundaries to where God's will is. So in these stories I talked about, God had an intention for Israel. Jesus had a plan for those demons. So when Moses intervened, when the demons made their request and asked for something different, he agreed. That doesn't mean that God abandoned his will. It simply means that God said, oh, okay, you want to go to a different part in the pasture? Sure, fine, go ahead. Demons, you want to go into that herd of swine? That's fine. That's still within my pasture. Moses, you don't want me to destroy Israel? Okay, I won't, but that will still be within my will for this nation. 
in our lives, we often stress about big decisions. Think about some of the big decisions you've had to make in your own life. Maybe it was a job choice. Maybe it's a decision about what college to go to. I'm thinking about right about now is when high school seniors are making those decisions. Maybe it's deciding what car to buy or what house to move into or even where to go on vacation. Maybe the big ones like who to marry. And we stress over them because we want to follow God's will. That's a good thing. But we might start to think that there's only one specific job or college or car that God wants you to get or to buy or to agree to. And if you go to a different college, if you pick a different job, if you buy a different car, then you've just stepped outside of God's will and Lord have mercy. Now, that's tightrope thinking, where if you make one wrong choice, you fall out of his will. Instead, I encourage you to have some pasture thinking. There are many options available to you, all of which are within God's will. Oh, sure, there are some choices that are outside of God's will for your life. That would be like the cow wanting to go on the other side of the fence. But this is an other sign of God's grace in our lives. Think about the hymn, there's a wideness in God's mercy. We can follow God in many different ways, and every single one of them is faithful to his will and to his call for us. Let us pray. Lord God, we're so grateful that you do have a plan for us and you have a plan for your world. And we're grateful, Lord, that you give us options within that plan. Help us always, Lord, to seek ways in which we can remain within your will. But we thank you for the freedom that we have within it. Help this awareness, Lord, ease any stress or anxiety we feel for ourselves and perhaps ease some judgmentalism we may feel for others. We pray all of this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Sorry for that phone call in the middle. I hope you're going to have a good day, and I'll see you tomorrow.